Israel says it has eliminated what it calls a terrorist cell in an airstrike on the Balata refugee camp in the occupied West Bank. This footage, released by the Israeli military, shows the attack, which targeted a car moving through the camp in the city of Nablus. Amateur footage posted on social media shows the vehicle on fire. Israel says the leader of a Palestinian terror network was inside the car. It claims the group was planning an imminent terrorist attack. Meanwhile, Qatar says it has brokered a deal between Israel and Hamas for the delivery of humanitarian aid and medication to civilians inside Gaza. Now, this would include Israelis who are being held captive by Hamas, which is considered a terrorist organization by many countries. The first supplies are expected to start arriving in Gaza today. And we can get more from Shana Lowe, who is from the Norwegian Refugee Council, which operates in Gaza. And Shana joins us now from Jerusalem. Shana, tell us how much of a difference this deal might make for Palestinians in Gaza. Well, any amount of humanitarian aid, any increase in humanitarian aid is needed. The, however, I think that the scope of what of the of the needs in Gaza, people are in need of food, shelter, clean water, medications, medical supplies, the same things we've been demanding for the last three months. Uh, we need a, a huge increase, a major scaling up of aid in order to really make a dent uh, in the in the tremendous needs. The, the, there are two things about this deal that I think are important to note. The first is that. We really need to, to not be linking humanitarian aid to political agreements. Israel, as the occupying power, has a responsibility to, to provide the necessities for, for sustaining life, for survival in Gaza. And we, we shouldn't be tying these uh, the provision of assistance to, to innocent civilians, 2.3 million innocent civilians who have nothing to do with this conflict other than being trapped there. Uh, on, on political deals and negotiations. Aid should have unfettered access into Gaza. And that brings me to the second point, which is that it's not just about getting the aid into Gaza, but it's also about getting aid to all areas of Gaza where it's so desperately needed, including northern Gaza, where the UN has only been able to deliver about a quarter or only had approval of about a quarter of the, the um, convoys to the north in the last two weeks that they have asked to coordinate with the Israelis. As you say, the need is huge. Tell us what kind of aid, what kind of medication is most needed now? Everything is needed in terms of medication and medical supplies. Uh, we need medications to treat chronic disease and illness. People who are in need of dialysis and have kidney failure, people with diabetes, all of those medications are in short supply and desperately needed. On top of that, we can't forget that there are still ongoing hostilities, ongoing airstrikes, ongoing ground operations inside the Gaza Strip. And so we need uh, medical supplies to treat those who are wounded. We need medical uh, anesthesia so that people can, can undergo surgery um, with painkillers. Many people, uh, both injured and pregnant, going through C-sections, have been, have been going through surgery without anesthesia over the last two, three months. Uh, so, so really, all medications, all medical supplies are in short supply in Gaza and we need to, and, and are needed throughout the entire Gaza Strip. Shana, can I ask you as, you, as you mentioned, there is ongoing Israeli bombardment. How does your organization manage to provide help to people in Gaza in these conditions? It is extremely challenging, and it's not just about the bombardments. It's also that we've been under communications blackout with Gaza and had very minimal contact with our staff since Friday of last week. It's now the fifth day since this blackout began that, that we've had limited connectivity. So between ongoing uh, hostilities and, and, and difficulties in communicating and coordinating a response, it's very difficult to reach those in need. At NRC, at the Norwegian Refugee Council, we've had to limit our uh, assistance really to southern Gaza, to the Rafa area, where over a million people have sought uh, refuge, are, are there and living and seeking refuge. But it's it's incredibly difficult to, to really have a, a concerted humanitarian response uh, in Gaza under such conditions, and, and particularly to reach those uh, areas north of Wadi Gaza, in, in Gaza City and, and the northern Gaza Strip. Shana Lowe from the Norwegian Refugee Council. Shana, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.
Special correspondent Aya Ibrahim has more on what it means for the Israeli hostages. Now it's been over 100 days of captivity. They've also had no access to uh, the Red Cross, has not had any access to them uh, during their time of captivity um, to check on their uh, medical state and to give their families a, you know, a more clear picture about what's going on with uh, their loved ones. Um, this issue of the Red Cross has also been very content contentious here in Israel, with many criticizing the Red Cross for not, um, you know, well enough fulfilling its uh, duty to uh, check on uh, captive regardless of the conflict as the Red Cross is a neutral party in, in, in conflicts. And so this news, uh, I imagine, will be very, very welcome uh, by hostage families who have been worried sick about their loved ones since they uh, have uh, been taken. And they need this medicine, of course, the, the hostage, we heard one hostage grandson say that this is, this is medication that they should have had from day one.